This is the reaction between a solution of silver nitrate and copper wire. Today's program is going to take a look at chemical equations and ways of expressing chemical reactions. Let's start off with several different ways that we can express a chemical reaction. One might be a word equation, where we write down the names of the substances involved. For instance, solid sodium and water get together to produce hydrogen gas and a sodium hydroxide solution. The next step might be to convert each of these words into its appropriate set of chemical symbols in the chemical equation. So sodium Na, water H2O, hydrogen H2. Don't forget there's other substances that like to exist in pairs or are diatomic. H2, N2, O2, and all the members of the halogens also like to be diatomic in nature. Sulfur makes a ring of eight sulfur atoms, hence S8, and phosphorus a square of four, P4. I've also included at this point the states of the substances involved, solids, liquids, gases, and sodium hydroxide is aqueous, meaning it's dissolved in water. Al would be used if it was dissolved in alcohol. From here, I want to take the chemical equation and balance it to ensure that the numbers and types of atoms on both sides of the equations are equal. So there's my starting point. I notice that here that the hydrogens don't balance, two on the reactant side and three of them total on the product side. To solve this situation, I introduced two coefficients of two in front of those substances, water and sodium hydroxide. This brings all of our elements into balance with the exception of the sodium, and I need a further two to do that. Now my numbers and types of atoms are the same on both sides of the equation. I now want to introduce something called an ionic equation. In an ionic equation, any substance which is aqueous is broken down into its ions. All the other species are left unchanged. So sodium hydroxide would break into a sodium ion and a hydroxide ion, one of each. The coefficient of two in front is then multiplied times each of the ions. Now I bring down the remaining equation and I have the ionic equation. In this case, this also serves as the net ionic equation as no species are common to both sides. It's important to note that sodium solid and sodium ions are very different species and don't cancel each other out. Let's take a look at another example, copper 2 sulfate being mixed with an iron 3 nitrate solution. Here's the equation for what goes on. The next thing I do is convert each of the substances into their appropriate chemical formula. I'd like to pause here and review this just a little bit. Copper sulfate involves copper ions and sulfate ions, each of them possessing a charge of two. One plus two, the other negative two. A perfect balance, hence I need one copper and one sulfate. In the case of iron three nitrate, iron possesses a three plus charge and nitrate a one minus charge. I require three nitrates to balance the charge of the iron ion. Some of you might recall this as the crisscross rule, where we take the magnitude of the numbers and they become the coefficients or the subscripts that we use uh, for each of the species. Copper 2 nitrate and iron 3 sulfate. So at this point we have our chemical equation. I am now going to try to balance the equation and begin by inspection here. I notice there are two irons on the product side, so I'm going to bring the coefficient two into play here. So that doubles the number of iron, but it also doubles my number of nitrates, up to six. To balance those nitrates, I'm gonna require three on this side to balance those. That takes my copper out of balance, so I'll introduce the coefficient of three here. That now balances this equation. Let's proceed now to the ionic and then the net ionic equation. Copper sulfate would break into two ions, copper and sulfates. The coefficient of three out in front would then give me this. Iron nitrate breaks down to iron and nitrates, but there are three nitrates present with each of the irons as seen in the formula. Now I'll bring down the coefficient of two, doubling each of those. Similarly, copper nitrate has copper and nitrate, but again, from the balanced formula, I need two nitrates. Now I'll bring down the coefficient of three, and the last substance being a solid, I don't change that. 
So now I have what's called the ionic equation, where everything aqueous has been expressed as ions. To get the net ionic equation, I cancel out species that are common to both sides of the equation. They are spectator ions. Here, the three coppers will cancel, as well as the six nitrates cancel. That leaves me with the following expression, which is called my net ionic equation. Finally, I'd like to look briefly at types of reactions. Now, types of reactions are not a requirement of IB, but it is useful to recognize some patterns that are mentioned. In synthesis reactions, we take smaller substances and assemble to make larger substances. For, so, for instance, ammonia and hydrogen join together to make a larger substance, ammonia. In decomposition, we do the reverse process. Here I'm showing the equation for copper sulfate pentahydrate being broken down into copper sulfate and water, into smaller substances. In single displacement reactions, we have substances exchanging positions in the equation. In this case, copper and silver exchange positions to form silver and copper nitrate. The two metals have undergone an exchange. But we can also exchange other parts of the equation. For instance, the non-metal portions can also be exchanged, as they're done in this equation, chlorine and bromine essentially switching positions. In double displacement reactions, we start out with essentially two compounds on each side of the equation. And in a similar fashion, we have an exchange of metal ions that take place. There is one special case I'd like to mention of a double displacement reaction involving acids and bases. In these cases, the hydrogen that's present in the acid will exchange places with the, often the metal. When that happens, you end up producing HOH, or water, and a salt. These are called neutralization reactions, and they're a special class of double displacement reactions. And finally, combustion reactions. In a combustion reaction, a fuel is often combined with oxygen to produce oxides of the fuel. In this case, our fuel, methane, CH4, the carbon portion turns out as carbon dioxide, and the hydrogen portion is oxidized to form water. So that's a quick review of different types of reactions. Again, as I say, you're not required to know the various types of reactions for IB, but some knowledge of the patterns is useful. Thanks for watching, and comments are always welcome.